The Jack Benny Program, transcribed and presented by Lucky Strike. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. For Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, richer tasting. Fine tobacco. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky Strike. Lucky Strike. This is Don Wilson. Friends, think back for just a minute to that last cigarette you smoked. Wasn't the taste of that cigarette the thing you really enjoyed? Of course it was. Smoking enjoyment is all a matter of taste, and many millions of smokers will tell you that Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. One reason is fine tobacco. You know, LSMFT, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Tobacco that is light, naturally mild, good tasting. And another, Lucky's are made better. Made to draw freely. Made to smoke evenly. Made to give you what you want from your cigarette. Better taste. So for all the real deep down smoking enjoyment you want, ask for the cigarette that definitely does taste better. Lucky Strike. Get a carton and be happy. Go Lucky. Be happy, go lucky, get better taste today. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Rochester, Dennis Day, Bob Crosby, and yours truly, Don Wilson. gentlemen, every spring, as soon as the warm weather starts in California, Jack Benny and his gang take a day off and go out to the beach. As we look in on Jack's home, he and Rochester are preparing for this annual picnic. Rochester, have you got everything? I think so, boss. Towels, bathing caps, suntan oil? Uh Uh-huh. Did you pack enough lunch? I put in some sandwiches, potato salad, pickles, celery, olives, and 60 hard-boiled eggs. 60? How come we've got so many hard-boiled eggs? Don't you remember? You were faster than any of the kids on Easter morning. (laughs) Oh, yes. I guess I was pretty lucky. Now, Rochester, I wonder if we should fill the thermos bottle with orangeade or lemonade. I'd suggest lemonade. That'll mix with anything. Look, we're just going to have soft drinks. If I take a long soft drink, it's not going to be used as a mixer. It's not? No. Okay, but when the musicians find out it's just plain lemonade, you're going to have another riot in cell block 11. (laughs) You needn't worry about that, Rochester. The musicians aren't coming this time. There'll be just my gang and the kids from the Beverly Hills Beavers Club. Boss, you've been running that Beavers Club a long time, haven't you? Yes, sir. The club remains the same, but the kids come and go. Mr. Band, do you ever hear from any of the original members? Yep. One of them's Vice President Nixon now. (laughs) (laughs) If I'm ever in Washington, I must look him up. He left owing 15 cents in dues. Now, Rochester, I want to take along my swim fins and diving mask so I can practice spear fishing. Maybe you'd like to try it out this afternoon, huh? No, thanks. I don't want to go down there. I might run to a shark or an octopus. You mean if you had your knife and your spear, you'd still be afraid of an octopus? Yes, sir. Why? Boss, there's something romantic about having two arms around you, but the mood changes as the number increases. <laughs> Look, Rochester, there's nothing to be afraid of. An octopus always gives warning by putting out an ink-like fluid. Yeah, but it would just be my luck to run into one of those paper-made kind that's (laughs) leak-proof. Now that's silly. Silly or not, I don't want anything to do with any octopuses. All right, Rochester, but for your information, the plural... The plural of octopus is not octopuses. <laughs> it's octopi. Uh-huh. And you shouldn't be afraid of them. They're completely dumb, unintelligent creatures. Uh-huh. They have no reasoning powers at all. They operate completely on instinct. Uh-huh. 
<laughs> Believe me, Rochester, they're more afraid of you than you are of them. You sold me, boss, but who's gonna sell the octopi? <laughs> Do you ever have octopi a la mode? <laughs> That's the silliest thing I ever thought of. I just thought of it. That's <laughs> Look, Rochester, forget it. You finish the packing. I'm going to call Bob Crosby and see if he's ready to go to the picnic. I don't know why I bothered to tell Rochester that the plural of octopus is octopi. He isn't going to hang around for more than one anyway. <laughs> I don't know why he's so... Hello. Hello, Bob. Oh, Bob, this is Jack. What time do you want to leave? Well, it's uh, 11 now. I'd like to get going before noon. Okay, then you pick me up. So long. Bye. Who was it, Bob? Oh, that was Jack. He wanted to know if we were ready. Well, I've got everything packed. Good. And June, I think I'll take along an extra pair of swimming trunks for Jack. You know, I don't want him to embarrass everybody like he did in Palm Springs. Oh, well, Bob, that wasn't altogether Jack's fault. Don't you remember? He forgot his and had to borrow one. Well, all right. So he borrowed a suit from Mary, but did he have to wear the top? <laughs> Oh. And not only that, honey, but you should have heard him trying to explain his tan to the boys in the steam room. By the way, Bob, who's going to the beach? Oh, Jack's taking the beavers and the whole gang. Oh, is Dennis Day coming again? Yeah. Oh, uh, you're not still mad at him from last year, are you? Certainly I am. What a stupid kid. Yeah, but Junie, he did... him coming up to me and saying, the last one in the water is a rotten egg. I was in over my head before I realized I still had my clothes on. <laughs> it was awful. Oh, Dennis is always pulling that trick. Well, if I'm going to pick Jack up in my car, I better call Don Wilson and ask him to pick Dennis up. Oh, Donald, Bob Crosby just called. You're supposed to pick up Dennis. Okay, I'll be out in a second, Lois. I'm trying on my new bathing suit. Well, hurry, dear. I've got the lunch pack, the towels, and everything else. Well, here I am. How do I look? Oh, they look fine. Turn around. Okay. These are Catalina swim trunks. I know. From the back, you look like Avalon. <laughs> Dear, you should go on a diet. Oh, but Lois, you know I've tried everything to lose weight. I even went to that psychiatrist last week. He gave me every kind of test. And then he said my tendency toward obesity was caused by my psychosomatic obsessions, which might be terminated by prefrontal lobotomy, provided my alter ego repressed my subconscious porcine tendencies. My goodness. What does that mean? I eat like a pig. <laughs> You do overeat, Don. And not only is it making you heavy, but it's wearing out your teeth. <laughs> oh, hey, dear, you really ought to do something. Well, now, who can that be? Probably the sportsman quartet. They're going to ride to the beach with us. Hi, fellas. Hmm. You all ready to go to the beach? By the sea, by the sea, by the beautiful sea. You and I, you and I, oh, how happy we'll be. Wave comes a rolling in, we will duck or swim, and we'll float and fool around the water, over and under, and then up for air. With a small dab of glue, Benny won't lose his hair. We love to be beside your side, beside the sea, beside the seaside, by the beautiful sea. Pismo Beach, Pismo Beach, that's where we want to be, with an L and an S, LSMFFT. Round and firm and so fully packed Yes, sir, it's a fact That a lucky strike is better tasting Light up a lucky, then puff and compare See how well it is made and we know you'll declare 
I have the smoke, I like a better tasting Lucky Strike. Beside me, by the beautiful sea, beside the seaside, by the beautiful sea. Rochester, carry all the stuff out in front of the house so we'll be ready as soon as Bob Crosby comes by. Okay. By the way, Mr. Benny, you know you said I could have tonight off, and I'd like to go to the movies. That's right. What about it? Well, yesterday was payday, and you forgot to pay me. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry about that, Rochester. I'll write you out a check right now. You think they can cash it at the movie? Boss, they can cash my check at the popcorn stand. <laughs> Never mind. Now, let's get this stuff out in front of the house, and I'll help you. All of it. That's it. Now, let's pile it all up here by the curb. Do we have everything, Rochester? Let's see what's here. The thermos jug, lunch basket, plates, towels, extra bathing suits. Then we got the bathing caps, the swim fins, surfboard, beach umbrella... Portable stove, coffee pot, and beach chairs. Yeah. Gee, it makes quite a pile here on the sidewalk. Mr. Benny, they're evicting you. <laughs> Why, Mr. Kessel! <laughs> no, 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 Mr. Kitzel. I'm not being evicted. We're just preparing to go to the beach. Ooh, that sounds pleasant. Yeah, why don't you join us? Oh, this I'd love to do, but I'm on my way to the baseball game, and I'd rather watch a baseball game than anything else. Oh, I didn't know you were a baseball fan. A fan? I used to play professionally. No kidding. What position did you play? Pitcher. I was known as Christy Kitzel. <laughs> Well, I'll be... So you were a baseball pitcher. You know, I'm surprised you never heard of me. In my last game, I established a record. I pitched a no-hitter. A no-hitter? Yep. Gosh, that's wonderful. What was the score? 26 to nothing. We lost. <laughs> you lost? But, yep. Mr. Kitson, you said you pitched a no-hitter. I did, but who, 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 who did I walk them? <laughs> Then, then I suppose you gave up the idea of being a pitcher. Definitely did. I became an outfielder. A good one, I hope. Huh? Pretty, pretty good. Uh, <laughs> As a matter of fact, Mr. Benny, many years ago, Joe DiMaggio and I tried out for the same position with the Yankees. Oh, it's a shame Joe DiMaggio beat you out. Yes, you should see what I married. <laughs> By the way, Mr. Kitzer, you, you know, you mentioned your wife so many times, and yet you've never told me her name. What is your wife's name? Marilyn, but there the resemblance ends. <laughs> you know, Mr. Kitzer, you're always talking about your wife being homely. Yeah. If your wife is so homely, why did you marry her? Who am I, Robert Taylor? <laughs> Oh, I see what you mean, yeah. Well, I got to dash along to the baseball game. I don't want to be late. Goodbye, Mr. Benny. Goodbye, Mr. Kitzel. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Gee, I'm sorry he couldn't come to the beach with us. Yeah, he's always a lot of fun. Say, Mr. Benny, who are the kids from the Beavers going to the beach with? Well, they're going to meet over at Dennis's house, and Don Wilson is picking them all up. Gee, I hope the kids won't be late. Come on, fellows, let's hurry. Yeah, I don't want to be late on my first outing with the beavers. Don't worry, Tiger, we won't. Gosh, it was awful nice of Mr. Benny to plan this day at the beach for us. Yeah, we're lucky kids, having a great man like Mr. Benny coach us. He's a champion at everything. Maybe today at the beach he'll teach me to swim. Is Mr. Benny a good swimmer? He's the best swimmer in the whole world. 
He told us he even swam the English Channel. <laughs> so what? Lots of people have swam the English Channel. Underwater? <laughs> Did Mr. Benny tell you that? Sure, he's told us lots of things. Like, like during his college days when he was at Yale, he defeated the entire Harvard swimming team all by himself. Gee, if he was that good when he was young, why didn't he get on our Olympic team? I don't know. I guess they just didn't have Olympics in those days. <laughs> I can't believe that Mr. Benny is such a fast swimmer. Remember, we saw him swimming in his pool the other day, and he looked awful slow. Well, it's hard to swim with all your clothes on. <laughs> why was Mr. Benny in the pool with his clothes on? Dennis Day came over to him and yelled, Last what is a rotten egg! <laughs> you know, I told my father about Mr. Benny teaching Johnny Weissmuller to swim, and Dad said he probably also taught him to talk to Neil. Why? Did your father ever hear Mr. Benny scream like that? Oh, sure, lots of times. What does your father do? Oh, he works for the income tax department. <laughs> My parents weren't going to let me go today until I told them we had a grown-up going with us. Yeah, and they don't have to worry. Mr. Benny takes real good care of us when we go to the beach. He sees that we behave and that we don't play too rough and that we never eat anything that might make us sick. Yeah, only today I kind of wish he'd let me take a chance and buy a Frankfurter at one of the stands. Me too. I'm tired of those peanut butter sandwiches he always brings. And they cost more than hot dogs, too. <laughs> yeah, say we better walk a little faster. We don't want to be late getting to Dennis Day's house. Dennis, I've got the lunch all ready for you. Well, thank you, Mother. Now, have you got everything else? Uh, yes, Mother, my swimming trunks, towel, and my beach umbrella. Good. Remember what I told you. I want you to sit in the shade of the umbrella all the time. Must I, Mother? Yes, Dennis. Enough people are saying you've been out in the sun too long already. <laughs> and that reminds me. Do you have enough suntan oil? Oh, yes, I've got a whole bottle. Good. And this time, remember, rub it on. Don't drink it. <laughs> okay. Gee, Mother, I do wish you were coming to the beach with us. I do, too. Mainly out of curiosity. You know, I've never seen Benny in a bathing suit. He must be awfully thin. Yeah, when he puts on a bathing cap, he looks like a plumber's friend. <laughs> Well, I, I'm ready to go now. You know, Mother, I remember once you and Dad took me to the beach when I was a little boy. Remember the fun we had? Uh-huh. And remember the games we played? Yes. Remember how we buried you in the sand? Yeah, and the next day the cop made you come back and dig me up again. <laughs> yes. That's how the expression first started. Oh, what expression? Dig that crazy kid. <laughs> Look, Dennis. You still have some time before Don Wilson gets here. Why don't you sing a song for me? All right, Mother. I'll do the one I'm going to do on Mr. Benny's show next Sunday. Vito mare quando bello Spirafando sentimente Con il tuo occhi pienamente Casce d'ato fai suonare Guarda qua chi stu giardino Siente si ste sciura rance Nu profuma così fino Din to core se ne va E tu dici parta Dio Allontana la stu core Della terra dell'amore 
Another five minutes in the water, and then we'll all have to come out. Yeah, we ought to build a fire before it gets too dark. Hey, what a clear day. You can see all the way out to Catalina. There's Avalon. That's Don Wilson. <laughs> Don, don't float out too far. I won't! Gee, Mr. Benny, this picnic is real fun. Only you should have invited more girls. Well, who, for instance? Well, the two CBS telephone operators. Gee, I didn't think of them. No, they came along last year. They're real fun, too. Especially that Mabel Flap saddle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, every time you threw that stick in the water, she'd bring it back in her teeth. <laughs> yeah, and the money she'd save on towels, she'd always shake herself dry. <laughs> All right, now. Come on, everybody. Out of the water. Out of the water, everybody. Oh, boy, Come let's on. start a fire. Let's start a fire. I'm hungry. I brought a ball in bed. Why don't we play some baseball first to dry off? Hey, that's a good idea. Now, the Beavers and I will play baseball. I'll play against the rest of you guys. Okay, we'll be up first. Junior, you be the umpire. Okay, Bob. All right. All right, Beavers. Get out in the field. I'll pitch. I'll bat first. I'm ready, Jack. Come on, Mr. Benny. Put it right over the plate. Okay. Here goes. Ball one. Hmm. Come on, Mr. Benny. Put it right over the plate. Ball two! Hmm. Mr. Benny, Mr. Benny, put it right over the plate. Okay. Ball three! Mr. Benny, this time see if you can reach the plate. <laughs> Don't worry, Harry, I'm just warming up. Here goes. I've got it! I've got it! Ooh! Ooh, now I bet I'll have a black eye. Wait till I tell my mom about this. It'll make her Mother's Day perfect. <laughs> oh, don't be so smart. And that's enough baseball for now. Let's all get dressed, and then we'll start the fire. Okay, everybody bring all that driftwood here and pile it in the center. Now, I'll start the fire. I got the matches. Hey, but Jack, we just got wood, no paper to start it with. Hmm, that's right. Look around for some paper, kids. Hey, we can start it with this. I just found some dry seaweed. Dennis, give me that. It slipped off my head. <laughs> now, go find some paper. I found a bunch, Mr. Benny. Here you are. Oh, thanks, Harry. Now, put the wood over it. Now, light it. Boy, the fire will be going in just a few minutes, so get your marshmallows ready. Hey, wait a minute, fellas. Who's this man coming toward us? Where? Oh, yeah. 
the hell? Well, what's going on here? Are you fellas having a picnic? <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, that ain't much of a fire you got there. Hmm. Ah, uh, you'll never cook anything on that. Look, mister... Uh, you're supposed to cross the sticks when you build a fire and leave room for the air under there. Look, don't tell me how to build a fire. I used to be a boy scout. With that seaweed on your head, you look like Father Neptune. <laughs> Look, fella, this is a private party. Mr. Benny, I can get rid of him. Dennis, keep out of this. Now, mister, why don't you go away and leave us alone? What's the matter? It's a free beach. I can go wherever I want to. <laughs> Mr. Benny, I I'm sure I can get rid of him. Well, all right, Dennis, go ahead and try. Okay. Last one in is a rotten egg. Put more wood on the fire. I gotta dry my clothes. Ladies and gentlemen, 90% of all forest fires each year are man-caused. A campfire that is almost out, a lighted match or cigarette that is tossed away, could burst into hungry flames and destroy millions of acres of vitally needed timberland. So when you're in the country, be absolutely sure you put out every fire, every match, every cigarette, completely out. Remember, only you can prevent forest fires. Thank you. Jack will be back in just a minute, but first, here's a word from America's Poet Laureate, Ogden Nash. Somebody once went through my poems and made a list of the things I dislike. It's a pretty long list, too. However, on the list of things I like, they said he likes good eating. Of course I like good eating. I like good anything, good fun, good smoking. Naturally, I smoke Luckies. To put it poetically, I hope I'm not a crank, but I've got one foible. I don't enjoy anything unless it's enjoyable. I'm pernickety about what I like, and for 30 years, I've smoked Lucky Strike. Thanks, Ogden Nash. There's more truth to that than poetry. Smoking enjoyment is all a matter of taste, and the fact of the matter is, Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. For two good reasons. First, LSMFT, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And fine tobacco means better taste. Second, Luckies are made better to draw freely and smoke evenly. That, too, means better taste for you. So be happy. Go Lucky. Luckies taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky Strike! Lucky Strike! Well, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes another program. And we'll be... Oh, there's the phone. Excuse me. Hello? Oh, hello, Mary. Oh, you heard from your mother? Oh, she got the flowers I wired her yesterday for Mother's Day. Good. Was she surprised when the Western Union boy brought them to the door? Oh, she's the Western Union boy. <laughs> Well, I'm glad she got them. Goodbye, Mary. A happy Mother's Day, everybody. The Jack Benny program is written by Sam Perrin, Milt Josephsberg, George Balzer, John Tackerberry, Al Gordon, Hal Goldman, and produced and transcribed by Hilliard Marks. The Jack Benny Program is brought to you by Lucky Strike, product of the American Tobacco Company, America's leading manufacturer of cigarettes.